Liquidity is drying up. Uh, cash is drying up. They need to create more reasons to pull cash into the now, and they it must be uh, expanded on exponentially, or the system just melts down on itself. They know that, but it gives us opportunity. I mean, all this is opportunity to say, okay, what can I do? What should I do now uh, to get myself in the right spots? That's really what I'm all about, and I'm, that's what you're all about, right? We're trying to get people in the right spots for what's coming, because it is coming, and it's coming bad and fast. This is Kaiser Johnson with our Black Friday specials for November 23rd through November 27th, 2023, while supplies last. First, we feature one tenth ounce gold eagles at $32 over melt with a minimum of five coins. Next, silver Nordic mint five ounce bars at just $1.99 over spot per ounce with a minimum purchase of 10 bars. We also have one ounce silver 2023 Britannia at $2.69 over spot when you order 50 or more coins. And finally, dealer's choice silver 10 ounce bars are just $1.49 over spot per ounce with a minimum of four bars. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, Call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We're always delighted to have this widely followed returning guest. Gregory Manorino is the founder of TradersChoice.net, and he's uh, been an acquaintance of mine for some time since we met at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium way back in Las Vegas, Nevada, a long time ago. Greg, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Thanks for having me back. Love to be here. Thank you again. Oh, absolutely. And our our viewers like to know the timestamp. It's Monday, November 27th, 2023. We just got through Thanksgiving weekend. It's Cyber Monday. And we're uh, circling back with you because so many of our viewers have requested your presence here and have kept asking questions about the stability of the banking system and of the markets. You've alerted us for some time now to fragility and uh, instability in the debt market and explained to us why the debt market is the the tail that wags the dog of the uh, stock market due to their the the fact that the stock market derives its value from the debt market and the debt market's in a lot of trouble that puts the banks in trouble maybe you can connect those three for us so people can understand why you're concerned about the debt market at this time and why they should be concerned if they aren't already about the stability of the banking sector at this point Let's start off with the banks. Um, this is a question I get a lot, and I have covered it at length to the point of like uh, a, a lot. I started to warn people over a year ago that there were problems here with the banks with regard to no loans, no deals, uh, you know, and, and uh, no deposits. And you know, it's it's just an incredible situation we have here. Uh, what I what I believe is going on is the consolidation of the system. We watched the regional bank issue, which has not gone away. Um, with you and and you know the, the large banks are facing the same problems here. Uh, people are what, what people are not being told and is going on right now is uh, capital withdrawals from the in, these institutions. Uh, these are at record highs. We've never seen anything like this before. Uh, not only are there no deposits anymore, but people are literally pulling their cash out. I don't know what people are doing with it. Maybe they're doing what our grandparents did. Uh, I don't know about you, but my grandparents actually hid cash in the house. You know, they lived during the Great Depression. Uh, they didn't trust the banks. I don't think anyone should trust the banks. I think, honestly, that the issues facing these the banks is is getting worse faster. Um, how do we know that? We just found out. I mean, this is just today. Uh, existing home sales crater. They got uh, the prior month uh, got revised lower. I mean, this is a big deal. Not only that, there's multiple factors going on here. Um, you got these. Let's talk about the number one issue. Well, maybe it's number one, but I think it's a huge issue. These institutions, and you're aware, well aware of this as well, have loaded up on debt. That has, is yielding nothing in this environment where bond yields are rising. That is has caused their balance sheets value to evaporate, and this is a big part, in my opinion, as to why the Federal Reserve is buying more debt right now, trying to keep rates suppressed and maintaining that illusion of stability in the debt market. That's how this whole thing ties together here. Um, the, look, what do we know is happening? We have nations like China, uh, a lot of nations now dumping U.S. debt. Who's buying it? There's always a buyer and there's a seller. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously we know who's <clears throat> buying the debt here. And that mechanism is going to continue, in my opinion. And I think it's going to get – in fact, I did a video about it this morning. I think this uh, – th th there's actually no doubt in my mind whatsoever 
that moving into next year, we're going to see a debt buying spree, not just a debt buying spree, uh, a dollar dumping spree by the Federal Reserve. You know, all central banks manipulate their currency. Everyone knows this. Okay, this should be common knowledge. Uh, How central banks manipulate their currency um, is, let's say, for example, they want to keep their own currency weak, which is what the Fed wants to do right now after a, a crazy run up higher in the dollar is they're dumping dollars in their buying foreign currencies. Um, you know, this is you can just see this in the way the markets are playing out. So what's going on here is is pretty clear. Uh, let's go back to the banks real quick. All kinds of trouble here for the banks and it's not getting any better. And I'll tell you something that bothers me more than anything else. You probably heard me say this. So the FDIC knows there are hundreds, hundreds, maybe even thousands of banks that are going to fail. We're not allowed to know it. It's above our pay grade. No one is allowed to know which banks are failing. And I think, again, they're consolidating the banks here. They're letting, they're going to allow some banks to survive um, and, and some banks to go down. I think uh, I did a whole piece on Bank of America. I think Bank of America is the worst off of the big Wall Street banks uh, right now. Um, looking at multiple factors. I think people need to pull their cash out of these institutions. I've been telling people to do this for the longest time. And where would they put their cash? People always ask me that. You know, uh, if you have to keep your cash in a bank, understanding the situation here, uh, with debt defaults skyrocketing across the board, people can't pay their bills, uh, home sales cratering, no deposits, loans, uh, forget about deposits, people withdrawing their deposits. I think there's a silent bank run going on here, and it's been going on for months. I think people are pulling their cash out because they realize there's a major problem here with these institutions. So get your cash out of the banks. Where would you put it? Well, I would say, uh, you know, if, they, if people had to look into uh, an institution, they should look into a credit union. Why credit unions? First of all, once the cash leaves your hands, or even if you even see it, because most people have direct deposit, um, you know, uh, it, 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 nothing is safe. There's always a counterparty risk. But with 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 uh, a credit union here, they don't take the risk that the commercial banks do. They don't have derivative exposure as the commercial banks do. These operate for nonprofit they, on a nonprofit basis. So basically, if you need to keep your cash in, uh, if you have no choice. Look into a credit union. Uh, we all have to keep some cash in these institutions to pay our bills, to participate in the system they've set up for us, unfortunately. But that would be where I would say people should uh, look into into that. Because, again, I think we're not done at all with regard to seeing um, the bank failures here. And we're, we're certainly not done with um, what – what uh, the central banks are going to do, none more so than the Fed, is that is pull cash into the now, prop up the system. The system is drying up. We have, we're in a major liquidity crisis here. But you wouldn't know that gauging from the stock market because the Fed's buying it all. They're buying it all, bro. You know that. And uh, it's crazy. So they're maintaining that illusion. It's an illusion of stability. Uh, and all they're doing is pumping the system with more debt, which is their product. And uh, and as I have covered and you have covered, and, you know, debts and deficits are going to balloon, balloon from here. We haven't seen anything yet, honestly. And it's going to go on until it doesn't. So what do people do? Uh, well, people that follow our work, I think, are well aware of what they need, need to do. Better against the debt, become their own central bank, hold hard assets here, gain exposure to commodities. At least I think that's what they should be doing here, other than even gold. Silver is my favorite asset of all time, as you know. Gold comes in second, platinum, palladium. I would say both an equal third. But you need, you know, look, there's a lot of ways to gain exposure to commodities, exchange traded funds, if you ha- are so inclined to do that. I also think, and this is, may sound crazy, but I think people need exposure to the, to the market. Take advantage of what the Fed's going to do. I'm buying. I am buying more of this market. Uh, so I, I think they're going to keep propping this up. I want to take advantage of that until, until it runs out. As long as they can keep risk at bay. And look what they're doing here with the 10-year yield, week to week or dollar. This opens up a doorway for cash to make its way into the stock market. So, um, again, people do your own homework um, and and think about about what's right for you. And there's multiple ways to attack this here. I mean, I think cash is eventually going to make its way into a lot of other assets, including uh, artwork. I collect artwork. I collect musical instruments, classic cars. Uh, you know, people, people, I'm an open book. Everyone knows what I'm doing. And I don't tell people it's right for them. I tell what I'm doing. And if they feel like, hey, you know what? I want to kind of mirror that. Well, then that's that's up to them. But it just seems obvious to me that people should be diversified here. But but overweight with regard to commodities, especially silver. That's that's my take on it. 
If I could follow up on two points you made there, one about the uh, silent bank run, people making withdrawals and taking money off a deposit in the banks because they're not comfortable after we've seen a leaked video from the FDIC talking about bank runs are going to be an inevitability. Let's not tell the public because that could be unintended consequences. After seeing uh, Yellen testifying before Congress and the, the representative from Oklahoma grilling her on why is it that you bailed out uh, in contrary to the 2010 Dodd-Frank Act, those depositors who had deposited that's way above the $250,000 uh, FDIC insured limit. And are you going to do that to my uh, community banks in, in Oklahoma? She says, well, only the ones that are systemically important, which means they, they actually judge that there was a risk, a systemic risk of the entire banking system, why they had to bail out those banks. But, but a private behind door conversation that I had with my own banker when asking why it was that, that bullion clients who are trying to buy silver, as you recommend uh, people consider doing, we're having more scrutiny and more levels of questioning from their bankers before the bankers would, would send out bank wires when people were asking them to wire money out of the bank uh, so that they could purchase metals. And he said, well, actually, we are responsible uh, because of anti-money laundering, et cetera, to help prevent wire fraud by asking certain questions just to make sure people are doing their due diligence. But he also then said he closed the door of his office and lowered his voice and said, well, but we're also instructed by our management to keep deposits on account and we anything we can do to keep money from going out the door we got to do so there there's that that's a corroboration of, of one of the points you made and the other was about uh the your continued participation in the stock market uh, and that's something you've trader's choice is about is about being a trader and a trading coach and that sort of thing people have been concerned about the stability if they're concerned about the stability of the debt market and the stock market and the brokerages and everything, they're concerned about how much of their money they want to have tied up in that part of the system. The book, The Great Taking, that just came out recently, it's a free ebook. We'll put a link for it in the description of this video, it talks about the legal uh, provisions that are, have been quietly, quietly, quietly being built in around the ownership or ownership of stocks to make it possible for uh, authorities to take over ownership in an event of a financial crisis. Your thoughts on that book in particular and the, the premise that it, come, that it brings forward, which is that basically nothing in the brokerage account really is yours uh, and it could be taken away from you in the event of a crisis. What are your thoughts on the great taking? I I've actually am just slightly familiar with this. I haven't read it. Uh, it, it you know, I try to like... Uh, what I do and why I haven't really read this thing here as of yet is I don't like – and I fell into this trap in the beginning when I started doing all this, uh, listening to too many people or reading too much of what other people had to say was kind of um, swaying the way – my own perspective on this. So I kind of look – although the concepts and what you just said are 100 percent true, but this isn't anything new. I don't, I don't think this is any revelation here. Um, there's always a counterparty risk whenever your cash is in any institution, not in your own hands or anything for that matter. There is counterparty risk. And you – as a, a person that is investing or as a person that is involved in uh, owning uh, assets outside of your – own hands holding them, uh, there, there's always going to be some kind of a counterparty risk. So I, I, this doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, absolutely. In, in a, they, they can do anything they want to. Can they confiscate assets? Sure they can. Could, uh, is it going to come down to something like that eventually? Are we going to lose our holdings of our investments? Probably. But that would also cause a collapse, a complete and absolute meltdown on an unprecedented scale, which you're going to get anyway, of, of the system here. But it would also hurt – Maybe the one in two percent is all the wealth is being pushed up. There's no trickle down. This is a big lie that everyone has been sold to. But so you got to look at the bigger picture. Here. I, I I don't think something like that is going to end up happening. Of course, it sounds sensational and it's cool to talk about and speculate. Uh, but 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 again, look, there's always going to be ways for people to uh, take advantage of this thing. And also, you know, look, you, you got to. Every day we wake up and by, by just taking our first step out of bed, there's risk. By taking, you know, whatever, walking across the street, there's risk in everything. You got to weigh that out. And then, you know, like what I do, and I tell people this too, it, it, what I do for me is, you know, I have direct access to my own investments. I don't rely on anyone else. I don't have to make a phone call or anything. You know, I can just instantly move cash around and I've been known to do that. So what, what, my situation, I'm sure, is different than most people um in that matter but 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 again like i from a safety standpoint i can't imagine look people think their market's risky 
It is. Risk in this market right now, based on my own indicator, the MMRI, uh, is at a, a very high level. We just dropped out of an extreme risk um, situation here uh, after Powell here kind of uh, paused again and is now the Fed's obviously buying more debt, weakening the dollar that's reflected in the MMRI. Um, anyway, risk in this market right now, I think the Fed's going to manage it. And I think uh, we can see um, some the illusion of stability in the debt market being maintained. And that is going to drive cash into the into the stock market. Now, I'm saying I'm telling people that I'm buying the market, but that doesn't necessarily mean they should be doing that. Um, for the, I think the it's always prudent for people to focus on the longer term, understanding that this whole thing is going to come apart. And I mean come apart uh, on, on a scale that I, I think I, – even me, and I, I study this stuff all the time. It's going to be more so than any, anyone can imagine um, as, as this thing starts to break down. And they're already dismantling the system in my view. The banks are part of the system that they're pulling apart right now, consolidating power. Everything that they've set out to do, these central banks, is happening here. This is nothing is by accident. It's all 100 percent deliberate. It's, it's all going to plan how they have thought this out. Uh, you almost have to tip your hat to these institutions because they really have the world where they want them right now. They control the economy, the financial system, the financial markets, the price action of pretty much every single asset right now. But that doesn't mean there is an opportunity. But longer term, I can't imagine a place better place to be than, than, than in a risk off um, uh, assets here. Because right now the environment is clearly risk on. Risk on meaning the Fed deliberately, deliberately driving cash into the stock market. Other central banks are doing the same thing as well. Um, eventually risk off is risk on is going to turn risk off. It's just going to flip the other way. And uh, and assets uh, like gold and silver and commodities and stuff are going to skyrocket. I, I also think uh, the crypto the crypto space is going to everything's going to benefit because you know a, a artwork, musical instruments, classic cars, all this stuff. Uh, so classic cars right now are, are astronomically high. Uh, in my entire life, I never thought that you'd see cars priced at what they are. But cash is seeking places to go uh, and uh, artwork too. I mean, you could look at how things are starting to play out, uh, but. You know, that, that's just my take on it. I, I want people to ponder things I talk about. Does it make sense that risk on is going to turn risk off? And when risk off turns off, and risk off, again, is going to be the time of their choosing when they allow the debt market to implode. Right now, an enormous amount of effort is going in to keep the debt market illusion stable. And it's an illusion. I mean, liquidity is drying up. Uh, cash is drying up. They need to create more reasons to pull cash into the now, and they it must be uh, expanded on exponentially, or the system just melts down on itself. They know that, and I think we're in the end stages of this. I don't know how long it's going to go on, but it gives us opportunity. I mean, all this is opportunity to say, okay, what can I do? What should I do now uh, to get myself in the right spots? That's really what I'm all about, and I'm, that's what you're all about, right? We're trying to get people in the right spots for what's coming because it is coming, and it's coming bad and fast. One of the things you just mentioned in passing was the uh, Manorino Market Risk Indicator, MMRI. We have a question from a viewer. Is the MMRI a leading or lagging indicator? It is a real-time indicator. Uh, it's not making any predictions of anything. It's, it's just telling you what the current risk level is at the moment in real time. And I think that's exceedingly important. So people can say, okay, this is what risk. See, look, it's just a tool. It's not the end all tool either. I think it's the best indicator for risk in this market that has literally been ever, ever created. I don't even think there is anything like it that even comes close. The fact that it is a real time indicator gives us, again, yet another little facet in this mosaic that we try to put together here, try to understand what's going on, what most likely is going to happen. If we see risk in this market dropping and we can, I mean, you don't even have to focus on the MMRI. You can tip, you can break this down into the dollar, um, the strength or the Dixie, uh, and you can look at the 10 year yield, which is the benchmark. But I think it's just easy to put it all together here. And that's how I came up with that little indicator uh, and allowing us to say, okay, look, risk is dropping. What is the Fed likely to do moving forward? How is that going to affect the flow of cash through the markets? That's it. That's really why I developed that thing for people to just have an, an extra little tool in their toolbox to make the best sense of what's going on at the current moment. You mentioned a lot of different assets that have intrinsic value. Most of them were tangible, uh, such as gold, silver, art, uh, musical instruments, vehicles, etc. Povarful says, Greg, are you still buying cryptos? Yes. 
Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I think. Uh, well, I, I, well, let me rephrase that. I ha I started. I told people on my blog that I was buying Bitcoin at around seventeen thousand. Um, and uh, right now I would think we're what, like 35 or 36,000. Uh, I haven't bought any since that time. I'm not saying I won't. I think at the current time it is undervalued. I own maybe five or six different cryptocurrencies right now. Um, the crypto space has gotten punished on a grand scale. Uh, its market cap has been pretty much caught, cut in half. And to me, it just looks like opportunity. It looks like opportunity to me. And I, I think the whole cryptocurrency is a misnomer. It's not a currency, okay? It's not a currency. The People generally do not in, uh, interact with these things. They don't use these as a medium of exchange. They, they hold these things kind of almost as if they would hold uh, gold and or silver. I'm one of those people. I have bought gold with Bitcoin uh, in the past, but... I don't generally transact in it. I hold on to it because I think, again, cash is just going to seek places to go. And, and judging from the current market cap of cryptocurrency and looking at the beating that is taken as of late, just it's like opportunity to me. Could I be wrong? Absolutely, I could be wrong. Uh, I'm not saying anyone should go all in on this. Absolutely not. I, I've been telling people for the longest time. I just think you need a little bit in your portfolio. I I'm I'm spread out. I tell people like I'm not all in on any one asset. I I, I own a lot of things, um, but if you had to own one thing, I would tell you to own silver. I mean that to me is still remains the most undivided asset in the world based on the Dow Jones Industrial Average gold ratio and the gold silver ratio. That's all I look at. If we can gauge where we think the Dow is likely to go, and I believe gold is going to get a one to one with the Dow, it makes it a no brainer. As to which uh, silver is going to go to 15 to 1, maybe even 10 to 1 in, in, in an extreme panic buying spree. And uh, I mean, this stuff could, you know, uh, it could be astronomical. I think uh, we don't know where the bottom is of the Dow. The Dow could, bottom could be 6,000. We don't know. We know the Fed jumped in at Dow 6,000. Could have been lower than that. And that seems to be a hard bottom. And I think in a moment uh, when, uh, you know, the last meltdown, the Dow, jump, the Dow was at 12,000. The Fed got cut in half. The Fed jumped in at 6,000. With QE1 to start propping it up, the market would have gone lower, absolutely, had the Fed not started quantitative easing one, uh, which rolled over to the quantitative easing two, which rolled over into Operation Twist, and they've never stopped buying debt since that time. But um, So we don't know where the bottom is. The bottom is where no man or no woman has gone before, but a one-to-one -one with gold, I think, is, is very likely. And then again, a 10-to-1 or a 15-to-1 with regard to silver. So uh, just do the math. It, um, it, it's, it's pretty profound. In addition to those statistics that you just mentioned that you tend to keep an eye on, those indicators, uh, another one that's uh, noteworthy, and you're talking about cash will be seeking a place to go. It already has been doing it quietly. It may be doing it in more of a uh, rushed manner in the future should more people wake up. Uh, the indicator that I'm talking about is uh, Rick Rule often talks about less than one half of 1% of investments in the U.S. are in either gold, silver, or mining uh, related equities. So in other words, less than one half of 1% percent of people's uh, investments are in precious metals and precious metals related equities. And he anticipates that as has happened in the past, the historical average is between two to two and a half percent. It peaked about four percent or more back in uh, 1980 and again 2011. Your thoughts on what will be likely the kinds of things that will awaken the slumbering masses and get them to go, uh oh, I better get my cash somewhere else other than where it, where it is currently or where it's disappearing from. Well, I tell you, it's, 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 it's an astonishing concept. Most people have no idea that they can actually acquire physical gold, physical silver, platinum. They have no idea. They're like, well, you mean to tell me I can actually buy this stuff? I can have it delivered to my house if I want to? Yeah. Nine out of 10 people have no idea that you can do that. That's, you know, we, people like you and me and the people that follow our work, I mean, we're definitely, in the, you know, I think uh, a, a different uh, tier here. On uh, 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 understanding, you know, where cash is eventually going to go, uh, people just don't know. They're completely naive to the fact that they can own this stuff themselves, that they can buy this stuff themselves. I've shown people pieces of silver, and like, and like they look at it. You mean that's a real piece of silver? I'm like, yeah, that's a real piece of silver. You know, they just they don't. Oh wow, and they touch it, and they're like, wow, this is. You know, when you, I don't know about you, and when you touch that, there's something about. Silver and real gold. When you just hold it in your hand, I don't know. It's magical to me. I'm telling you. I'm like, this is where it's at. You can feel it in your bones. I don't know another way to say it. Anyway, but uh, more, more people are going to wake up because, again, look, you call a brokerage and ask them where you should be putting cash. 
Look, are they going to tell you she put it into gold or silver? Heck no. They're going to tell you you need to buy stock or ETF XYZ because they make money off of the transaction. But they're not going to tell people that's where they need to put in their money. And, you know, it's up to us people to figure it out, unfortunately. Um, but I, I think you and me and there's a lot of other people out here have been doing a heck of a job over the years trying to inform the public and tell people what they should be looking at. And again, look, when I say things to people, I don't want people to – to believe anything I'm saying. I want them to research it themselves. I want them to ponder it, to think about what I'm saying or what we discuss here right now and say, hey, you know what? This makes sense to me or it doesn't make sense to me. Your people are allowed to disagree with what we're saying. Absolutely, they're allowed to do that. In fact, I welcome that. And, I, I, and when people who disagree with me you know, I'm, I'm not too old to learn a new trick, but then, you know, explain to me what I am missing so we can all grow together. But again, I can't imagine that and you and I have been friends for a long time and we've been on target for a long time with this. And uh, I'm happy to say that I think we've kept the people who follow our work way ahead of the curve. Yeah, I would go a little farther uh, in describing the relationship that people have when talking with a traditional financial advisor. And I, ironically, traditional isn't even the right term. It's just like going to the conventional food in the grocery store. That's the experimental food. The traditional food is the stuff at the organic uh, farmer's market. But anyway, uh, so when people go to a typical retail investment advisor, uh, they and they say, "Gee, I want to. I'm very uncomfortable with the with the instability of the bond market. I'm really uncomfortable with the instability in the stock market. I'm really uncomfortable." With the instability of the banking regime, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the inflation destruction of my purchasing power, my dollar. I would like to take a significant portion of my nest egg out of the system and put it in something real and tangible. Uh, the uh, typically we hear from them that they get try to talk back in into staying staying in the markets uh, from their investors. And a lot of those investors, we've even had some whistleblowers come on here and say that the investment advisors say they're told by their management, you've got to keep the funds under management because if the funds aren't under management we're not making our our percentage per year or whatever on on management of those funds you've got to keep those funds in house because they're not coming back once they walk out the door and it's similar to reminds me what the banker was telling uh me about why they're reluctant to send you know big wires out for for people and get deposits off of account um so that's one thing the other thing is the you talked about uh ownership of real things versus ownership of paper assets. Uh, there's a question from a viewer, JP LaCroix, who says, Greg, do you think there's a difference between the Sprott Physical Silver Fund, uh, PSLV, versus the normal SLV ETF for silver ownership? And you've already talked about actual physical ownership of real silver, but in contrast to these two e different ETFs that people can look at. Well, you know, look, of course, I'd want to own something that has a that is actually backed by something real. I mean, that's kind of is an is a no brainer. But but at the same time, you know, look, I, given the choice, I'm going to tell you a million times I want to own it. I want to have it in my own possession. I don't want to be putting my cash into something where I, uh, anything like that, that I don't. I don't know that I can actually hold it. Um, and this, you know, look, obviously you. Uh, you know, I'm in things that are intangible, like, for example, Bitcoin and stuff that you can't actually touch. Or so but 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 with regard to having th this stuff in my hand, I, I there's no there's just no way around that being the ultimate place to be. I don't know another way to say that here. I, I'm not invested in any of those things. And, and, and I have I've been in the past. Yeah. Um, but would I invest again? Probably not. Um, I, I think I've grown a lot. I just want access to my own stuff at any time. I want to be able to touch it, play with it, <laughs> you know, smell it, lick it, kiss it. That, that's my take. Yeah, there's been a long-standing relationship between humans and precious metals. It, it, it's remarkable. There are few things across all cultures, all continents, all languages, and all centuries that people seem to agree on, and gold and silver are one of those things, um, or two of those things. Uh, we have a question regarding the stability of the banking system and what people are observing, those who are paying attention are observing in their communities even. Uh, ICE 9594 asks, what's up with all these bank branch closures? Is it part of the plan for CBDCs and the problems with online account access? What's going on? There have been some rather 
uh, poorly publicized uh, major bank uh, online access failures or system failures that happened. One of them happened with m uh, multiple of the major banks at the same day that the FDIC was taking over uh, ownership of an Iowa bank that failed uh, just last month. But it says, do you think we will see a bank bail in at any time? Thanks for considering my question. So back to the banks for a moment. Branch closures, online account access glitches, etc. Do you think that these are just normal uh, glitches in the in the course of business and 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 or you see this as signs of instability or weakness in the banking system they're consolidating the system we're going to see a lot more of this moving forward there's no doubt about it they're consolidating power and it's going to be again in fewer and fewer institutions it's about control it's all about control um i don't trust any of these institutions at all uh, I think the, there's a couple of big institutions that are going to survive. That would probably be the Goldman Sachs's or J.P. Morgan's. Uh, I think I think more power is going to be consolidated in there, especially the way you know Jamie Dimon is in bed with the government. Whenever there's a problem, they always go to this guy. Um, so for the for J.P. Morgan to fail, I I don't think that's going to happen. I think you're going to see them absorb other institutions like they did with Bear. Um, uh, they'll probably, or maybe they'll break up other institutions. We're going to see more failures. And, and I have no doubt we're going to see a, one or two big institutions fail too. Um, you know, I, again, Bank of America would probably be my, my number one that I, I believe uh, has the potential of going down. Um, and, and also from a symbolic standpoint, Bank of America to go down would be um, pretty profound. But anyway, uh, yeah, th so this is just, we're going to see more of that. Just people, be very careful with your cash, where you're putting it here. These these institutions, uh, they, they, there's not even a fractional reserve system anymore. It's a zero reserve system. They're all insolvent. Um, and, uh, you know, just only keep in these in these institutions what you need. Uh, don't don't keep anything in there that you don't. And again, look into credit unions. Uh, don't take my word for the, for what, anything I'm saying. Just look into this stuff. I think they're safer. I don't think they're 100% safe. Nothing is 100% safe, as we said earlier. There's always counterparty risk. But I think if you would consider a credit union, you should look at these things because again, they don't take the risk that the commercial banks do. Uh, with regard to bail-ins of could, absolutely, we could see bail-ins, bail-ins, bails out, bails everything else. It's, any all this stuff is possible, um, but we'll see. Like I'm saying, if they if you only kept in these institutions what you needed to just to pay bills, that lessens your risk a lot. And uh, you need to hide it under your mattress. You're not earning anything with regard to interest on these things here. Uh, I mean, you know, you could just. It's a lot of things people can do. I, I, I hate to even you know people want to be safe. Safe, they could roll. Uh, they could buy tr short-term treasuries and, you know, three months and just roll it in and roll it in and at least they get something back on their cash. But I mean, like, there's risk there too. Name some place where there's no risk. It's an impossible place to find. There's always risk. Always. You can't, you can't, you can maybe minimize it, but you're never going to escape it. And even though, even if some investment seems almost foolproof or it's absolutely, you know, it's so low risk. There's always some risk, and that means you can lose your entire investment, period. So just, just be aware of that. Yeah. Uh, our viewers have heard of my story about uh, my wife and I getting told we couldn't access our money market fund uh, until further notice uh, after the 2008 collapse because of uh, Lehman Brothers' count, uh, impact on that, even though we thought we were in the safest thing we could find. So been there, done that, and appreciate your presence here and follow your work. If people want to stay plugged in, where should they go? My website's probably the first place, or you can just, just Google me. You'll find me somewhere. Traderschoice.net is Greg's uh, is his website, and make sure you sign up for his free uh, newsletter so he gets he publishes at least twice a day Monday through Friday and also on the weekend uh, with a market a look ahead so guys you don't want to miss that it's it's free and you get a greater uh, color of all of Greg's opinions about what's going on it helps to give you 